Having a good intake when you encounter a new patient can sometimes be time consuming. However, it is crucial that you give the patient time to explain his or her complaints and concerns. Trying to work as evidence-based as possible, besides the intake, you'll also screen for yellow and red flags and give some explanation about the disease your patient is confronted with. And then all of a sudden, time is nearly over and you still have to conduct some tests or let them fill in a relevant questionnaire. Does this sound familiar to you? No worries. Even the best clinician sometimes has difficulties with time management. In this video, we will take a look at a very quick test developed to assess knee pain and sporting function in young adolescents with patellofemoral pain. Let's go. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Participants with patellofemoral pain were compared with 50 healthy matched controls and assessed at baseline and reassessed after 4 and 12 weeks. The diagnosis of patellofemoral pain was based on the presence of anterior or retropatellar pain with an insidious onset and a duration of more than 6 weeks. Pain had to be provoked with prolonged sitting or kneeling, squatting, running, hopping or stair walking. A tenderness on palpation or when stepping down or double leg squatting was present and the worst pain during the previous week was at least 3 out of 10 on the vest. Patients with patellofemoral pain then participated in a 12-week intervention with four supervised sessions targeting activity modification in the week 0 to 4, home-based exercises in week 4 to 12, and return to sport guidance in week 8 to 12. During the study course, the COST subscales sport and recreational function and pain were used to assess difficulties with function and sports participation due to knee pain. Okay, enough said. How is this 45 second test performed? Prior to beginning the test, a score on the numeric pain rating scale is given from 0 to 10. Then the patient is instructed to perform a single leg squat with the knee in 60 degrees of flexion and the trunk slightly forward. This position had to be held for 45 seconds and it was allowed to place a hand on the wall for balance. The study concluded that participants with patellofemoral pain reported pain after the test while the healthy controls did not. So, the test was able to differentiate between individuals with patellofemoral pain and controls. Furthermore, the numeric pain scores from the anterior knee pain provocation test were weakly to moderately associated with the co subscales pain and sporting or recreational function. So this means that with just one test, you can build a picture about the functional performance of these individuals. Lastly, as the patients improved throughout the course of the 12-week intervention program, the scores on the anterior knee pain provocation test did also improve, which means that the test was responsive to change over time. The ROC analysis showed that at a threshold of 1.25 on the NRS scale, the sensitivity and specificity were the most optimal, being 82% and 89%. At this point, the positive likelihood ratio was 7.6. So, what can we conclude? The anterior knee pain provocation test is a useful test to assess pain and sporting function. An important side note is that the test is not to be used as a diagnostic tool as it is not able to discriminate between other common types of anterior knee pain, like for example Osgood-Schlatter, patellar tendinopathy or signing larsen johansson as they also produce pain on a flexed and loaded knee. Rather, this test can give a very quick insight into the sporting and functional capacity of the athlete as it was associated with the COS scores and therefore this test may be useful to track changes throughout rehabilitation. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and give us a like or a comment down below. If you are interested in learning more about telephone pain, we suggest you have a look at our brand new course with Claire Robertson which was released lately at physiotutors.com. This was Ellen for Physiotutors. I'll see you in another video. Bye.